the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Cabinet Spokesman and Minister Vijay Tahirat announces that no funds have been allocated for public sector salary increases, contradicting prior commitments made by the previous government. Sri Lanka has exceeded last October's total tourist arrivals within the first 27 days of this month, indicating strong potential for double-digit growth in the tourism sector. The gains recorded at the start of the week at the Colombo Stock Exchange have been maintained over the course of today's trading session, with the ASPI hovering over 12,500 points. And Wall Street closed higher ahead of a packed week of earnings from mega cap companies and the final stretch before the US presidential election. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Cabinet spokesman and Minister Vijay Taherat announced that no funds have been allocated for public sector salary increases, contradicting prior commitments made by the previous government. Minister Vijay Taherat emphasized that while the Cabinet of Ministers can make policy decisions, there is currently no fiscal pathway to implement salary increases for public sector employees. In this year, the government issued a directive to adjust public service allowances and pension contributions. However, any relief related to living expenses is limited to an interim payment of 5,000 rupees per month until March of next year, leaving the promised salary increase uncertain. Minister Herat criticized the previous administration for misleading the public on this issue and pledged to ensure transparency going forward. He assured that while the cabinet remains committed to fulfilling salary promises, a concrete increase will only be feasible starting in the next year. The Cabinet of Ministers have granted approval for awarding the contract to MS OQ Trading Limited for the supply of liquefied petroleum gastrolytro gas company for the next year. In a press conference held this morning, Cabinet spokesman Minister Vijita Herat announced that the government has initiated a tender process for the supply of liquefied petroleum gas to Litro Gas Lanka Limited for the upcoming year. The tender was conducted under the single-stage double-lot system following international competitive bidding. Minister Herat revealed that only two suppliers participated in the bidding process, MSOQ Trading Limited and MW Siam Gas Trading PTE Limited. However, the bid from MW Siam Gas Trading was ultimately rejected. Following recommendations from both the Technical Appraisal Committee and the Standing Procurement Committee, the Cabinet has approved MSOQ Trading Limited as the substantively responsive bidder. As a result, OQ Trading will be awarded the contract for the supply of LPG to Litro Gas Company for the next year. Sri Lanka has exceeded last October's total tourist arrivals within the first 27 days of this month, indicating strong potential for double-digit growth in the tourism sector. Sri Lanka welcomed 117,141 tourists in October so far, averaging 4,339 daily arrivals, up from 4,233 earlier in the month. The tourism industry noted a mid-year slowdown due to visa-related issues, but recent travel warnings from the US and UK did not result in an immediate decline. If trends continue, October is projected to reach approximately 134,789 arrivals, falling short of the target of 153,000. 1,123, but still reflecting an 18% year-on-year growth. India remains the top source market with 32,097 arrivals, followed by the UK with 9,113 and Germany with 7,609. Notably, over half of the arrivals came from outside the top 10 source markets, indicating a broadening appeal for Sri Lanka as a travel destination. This growth highlights the resilience of the tourism sector, which is gradually recovering after recent challenges. Industry stakeholders remain optimistic about continued improvement improvements as global travel resumes. A meeting was held yesterday at the Presidential Secretariat between Secretary to the President Dr. Nandika Sanat Kumar Nayaka and CHEC Port City Colombo Managing Director Xiong Hong Feng. The discussions focused on the progress of the Colombo Commercial City Development Project, emphasizing new strategies to tackle anticipated economic challenges. In a commendable display of corporate social responsibility, the CHEC Port City Colombo announced a donation of 3 million rupees to support those affected by recent flooding. Assistant Managing Director Xiang Nan was also present at the meeting. 
The Sri Lanka Export Development Board plans to escalate service sector revenue to $5 billion by 2030, after the sector recorded $3.1 billion in the last year, and the ICT sector recorded $1.2 billion. The Export Development Board participated in the 18th Asia-Pacific Conference of German Business in New Delhi from the 24th of October to the 26th. During the conference, the EDB highlighted the government's new strategies to boost the export sector, including an anti-corruption policy, improved transparency and digitalization across government institutions. The EDB plans to implement a single-window concept to simplify the approval process by integrating key institutions, which is expected to expedite approvals and help exporters find Find new markets more easily. Currently, there are 4,435 exporters, and the EDB aims to expand this number by focusing on four regional centers Gaul, Kurunagala, Kandy, and Jaffna. The initiative will target village level entrepreneurs and develop export oriented SMEs to strengthen the export landscape. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The gains recorded at the start of the week at the Colombo Stock Exchange have been maintained over the course of today's trading session. The S&P is set to any close with slightly more gains, while the ASPI saw a net positive as well, with points inching closer to the 13,000 mark. There are hopes that this positivity will carry throughout the week. To provide further insights, let's connect with Minal Vikramage from Capital Alliance. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note. The market ended at 12,745 points, marking a 135.54 point increase from the previous session with a turnover of 3.96 billion rupees. The S&P SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 68.83 points to end the day at 3,859 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers recorded on HMB Bank, Sampath Bank and Lanka IOC. The top five gainers for the day were Blue Diamonds Jewelry Non Voting, Industrial Asphalts, Mahavali Coconut Plantations, Nature's Trust Bank Non Voting, and Convenience Foods Lanka. The top five losers for the day were Ceylon Printers, Mercantile Shipping Lands, Orion Finance, Asia Capital, and South Coast Motors PLC. The Treasury bond and bill auctions held recently have given some insights into investor sentiment and the secondary market. For an analysis, let's connect with Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. In today's Treasury bill auction, the weighted average yield rate saw an upward trend across the three-month and six-month bills, while the one-year T-bill remained unchanged. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka offered a total of Rs 145 billion and fully subscribed to the total offered, accepting Rs 145 billion. The three-month T-bill saw a rise of three basis points, reaching a weighted average yield rate of 9.35%, and similarly the six-month bill also saw an increase of three basis points, with a weighted average yield rate of 9.68%. In contrast, the one-year bill remained unchanged with a weighted average yield rate of 9.95%. Despite the strong demand for the three-month bill, which was oversubscribed, both the six-month and the one-year bills were undersubscribed, particularly the one-year bill, which saw minimal interest with only Rs 2.7 billion being accepted. Additionally, yesterday's bond auction raised Rs 32.5 billion, yielding full acceptance in both maturities offered. The 15-10-28 bond closed with a weighted average yield rate of 11.84%, while the 1-6-20-33 bond saw a slightly higher rate of 12.36%. Gold prices rose in Asian trade today, coming close to record highs as a run-up to the 2024 presidential election and uncertainty before upcoming data prints kept safe haven demand in play. Spoke gold rose 0.4% to $2,753.60 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December rose 0.4% to $2,765.50 an ounce. The yellow metal recouped all of its losses from the previous session as easing fears of the Middle East conflict so gold slipped from recent peaks. 
Haven demand also buoyed by anticipation of a string of key economic readings this week, which are likely to factor into the Federal Reserve's plans for interest rates. Oil prices rose in early Asian trade, recovering some ground after easing concerns over a worsening conflict in the Middle East sparked deep losses in the prior session. Brent oil futures expiring in December rose 0.7% to $71.94 a barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 0.7% to $67.87 a barrel. Both contracts hit more than 6% yesterday after an Israeli strike against Iran over the weekend mostly avoided Tehran's oil and nuclear infrastructure. The Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated slightly against the US dollar in commercial banks today compared to yesterday. The buying and selling rates have seen increases in most banks. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. Going in for a short break now, this is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Innovative information technology company Sespa announced the acquisition of Conifs Global, a marking a monument step in Sespa's journey towards becoming Sri Lanka's largest IFS partner. This acquisition underscores SEBSA's commitment to providing enterprise resource planning solutions and expanding its global footprint. SEBSA specializes in delivering customized IT solutions that tackle business challenges through innovative ERP systems, web and mobile application development. With over nine years of experience in ERP implementation globally, SEBSA's consultants are at the forefront of helping businesses streamline their operations and achieve excellence. The acquisition of Conifs Global represents a significant milestone for SEBSA. The public announcement of the acquisition was held at SEBSA's corporate office, attended by management teams from both companies, senior employees and well-wishers. With this acquisition, SEBSA not only strengthens its position in Sri Lanka but also expands its capacity to deliver advanced IT solutions on a global scale. National Development Bank PLC has been named Sri Lanka's best bank for corporates at the Euromoney Awards 2024, highlighting the bank's unparalleled commitment to supporting businesses across various sectors. The Euromoney Awards are known for their rigorous assessment process and NDB's victory in the Best Bank for Corporates category is a reflection of the bank's continuous efforts to provide value-added services for corporate clients, including large enterprises, small and medium-sized enterprises and emerging businesses. NDB's corporate banking capabilities are rooted in understanding the specific needs of businesses. NDB's Neos Corporate offers an advanced suite of online payment solutions and cash management tools. This sophisticated platform also introduces features such as electronic check printing, real-time tracking and checkbook request modules, offering unprecedented control and transparency to corporate clients. Moreover, NEO's BIS, a digital banking solution tailored for SMEs, enables users to manage financial operations with ease, offering features like bulk fund transfers, employee salary payments and secure multi-user access. Assetline Finance Limited has appointed Mano Rajakaria as an independent non-executive director. With over 30 years of experience in auditing, financial management and reporting, he has held key roles at South Asia Gateway Terminals, John Gills Holding PLC and Cooper's a Labyrinth in Sri Lanka and Malawi. Rajakaria's expertise includes financial and management accounting, auditing, risk and compliance. He is a member of the Ethics Committee at CA Sri Lanka and serves on the board of Alumix PLC, Haley's Fibre PLC and Digital Mobility Solutions Lanka Limited. A fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka, he is also a fellow member of the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants UK and the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka. 
The Sri Lanka Design Festival has announced the return of its product and interior design exhibition. Relaunched after hiatus, the event highlights Sri Lanka's growing focus on local design-led industries. From November 7th to 10th, the Sri Lanka Design Festival will host its 15th edition themed Innovation Island at the Cinema Life City of Dreams in Colombo. This year's festival features a dynamic business-to-business -business commercial program alongside an engaging public program that includes immersive workshops, thought-provoking exhibitions and visionary talks led by both local and global creative icons. The product and interior design exhibition serves to position Sri Lanka as an emerging creative hub, highlighting the nation's design capabilities on a global stage. As the world increasingly turns to design as a vital tool for addressing pressing challenges, this platform offers Sri Lankan designers the opportunity to showcase their talent through innovative perspectives and unique products. Singer Sri Lanka has formed a strategic partnership with SLT Mobitel, the country's national ICT solutions provider, to enhance customer convenience through two innovative projects. This collaboration will integrate SLT Mobitel SIM card sales into 410 Singer showrooms across the island. With this initiative, customers purchasing mobile phones at Singer outlets can easily opt for an SLT Mobitel SIM card on the spot, creating a seamless one-stop shopping experience. In addition to the SIM card sales, customers can also take advantage of an initial reload service at the same location, simplifying the process of starting their new mobile connection. Taking a short break now, global updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks were flat today as focus turned to a barrage of key earnings due in the incoming days. While Japanese markets extended gains after the country's ruling coalition lost its parliamentary majority. Japan's Nikkei 225 and Topics indexes were outliers among Asian stocks, rising 0.3% and 0.9% respectively as they extended strong gains from the prior session. Regional markets brushed off a positive lead in from Wall Street, as U.S. stocks drifted higher amid some hopes that geopolitical tensions in the Middle East will not worsen. Broader gains in Japanese markets came trackling a sharp drop in the yen after the country's ruling coalition led by the Liberal Democratic Party lost its parliamentary majority in the general elections held over the weekend. Wall Street closed higher ahead of a packed week of earnings from mega cap companies and the final stretch before the presidential election, while sentiment improved after energy supplies were not disrupted by weekend developments in the Middle East. The Dow climbed to about two-thirds of 1%, while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq added about a quarter of 1% each. About one-third of the S&P 500 companies report quarterly results this week including technology giants Microsoft, Apple, and Meta Platforms. Investor sentiment improved on Monday after energy supplies were not disrupted by weekend developments in the Middle East, as Israel's response to an Iranian attack avoided refineries. Stocks on the move included Boeing, which fell nearly 3% after the plane maker launched a stock offering that could raise up to $22 billion dollars in a bid to shore up its finances amid an ongoing worker strike. And shares of 3M gained more than 4% after J.P. Morgan hiked its price target on the industrial conglomerate stock. Volkswagen plans to shut at least three factories in Germany, lay off tens of thousands of staff and shrink its remaining plants in Europe's biggest economy, as it plots a deeper-than-expected overhaul. Volkswagen plans to lay off tens of thousands of workers and close at least three factories in Germany. That's according to the carmaker's Works Council head Monday. They further said the German auto giant wants to shrink its remaining plants in Europe's biggest economy. Europe's biggest car maker has negotiated with unions for weeks on plans to revamp its business and cut costs. It includes potential plant closures in Germany for the first time, and the news fell hard on the workforce. Works Council head Daniela Cavallo said management is absolutely serious. 
She added, it is not saber rattling as part of a collective bargaining round. The comments mark a major escalation of a conflict between VW's workers and the group's management. VW is under severe pressure from high energy and labour costs and Asian competition. It also faces weaker demand in Europe and China and a slower than expected electric transition. VW said in a statement it would make proposals for how to cut labour costs on Wednesday. It's the same day workers and management meet for the second round of wage talks and the carmaker releases third quarter results. The automaker said it was still committed to finding solutions for the situation jointly with labour representatives. And that is all we have for you tonight on the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more updates across the business globe. I am Sarnimudan Nayaka. Thank you for watching. Good night.